Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about what the first part of the year and actually what this big awakening is going to be all about for you when the Jupiter Uranus conjunction comes together in April of 2024. But most of all, I want to give you an idea of what you can expect for the next six months, all the way between now and next May, because Rahu and K2, the nodes of the moon have just shifted signs the end of November. And actually, if you use the mean node, they've already shifted signs early November. But regardless, life is going to be quite different for all of us. And I wanted to give you an idea of what you could expect between now and next May. So this is a long range of exactly what you're going to be experiencing for about the next six months or so. I call this a time of awakening because all of us are awakening to something new. And I think you're going to love this because it's time that the light and the energy of this world shines through because it's been in such a dark place. So listen up here. I'm going to give you guys some hope. I'm going to give you some very specific information according to your sign for the next six months. And you're going to want to find out what your Vedic sign is, because if you try to use your Western sign, it's not going to work. So please, please pay attention. I know a lot of people think, oh, I'm a Virgo or I'm a Libra from their Western placements. No, you cannot do this. It just actually is not correct. So take my word for it. Figure out what your ascendant and your moon sign are. Those are the two signs that you're here to listen to, to get an accurate prediction for what you're going to be experiencing. Now, if you don't know what they are, which a lot of you probably don't, if you're new to my channel, uh, you can go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org and go to my free chart calculator. But once you put in all the data, don't try to read the charts. If you're not familiar with Vedic astrology, scroll down to the bottom and wherever you see AS, that's your ascendant. That's the first sign I want you to listen to. And where you see the MO, that is your moon sign. Now, what's the difference between the ascendant and the moon sign? Well, the ascendant is going to be your experiences and the moon is going to be how you feel about it all. And don't kid yourself. The moon is vitally important. As a matter of fact, in India, they actually read the transiting planets from the moon sign first before they look at the ascendant. That's how important it is. So both of these will be relevant. Will they contradict each other? No, they're just going to give you more information. So those of you that don't know, I have just started a new Patreon page where you get all of my services, just about all of them at a cut rate price. And so much is being offered. It's like my way to really connect to you personally. So go to my Patreon page. The link is down below. So it's Patreon Joni Patree. And with that, you're going to see all the different exciting opportunities, price cuts, connections. We have it all going on here. You're really going to be surprised. Please just check it out and see if it's something you want to do and try it out for a month or two. You'll be amazed at all that I'm offering for all of my, my students, my clients, my fans. Let's all come together because the reason why I'm doing this, it really is to connect better with you, with you as well as to raise consciousness and take astrology to the next level. So join my Patreon and we will connect. So let me get going now and I'll talk about each and every ascendant and moon sign as to what you can expect and how you're going to be awakened this year. So 
if you have an Aries ascendant or moon, then you're going to find that this is going to, this is the year of new beginnings, opportunities. It's a time of expansion. And I guarantee you, you feel different than you've ever felt before because it is a time of a fresh new start. Another thing is with Aries, you're going to find that maybe even the way you look changes. You change your appearance, you change your style, you change what you're drawn to. Even the colors that you like are different. It's just you are new and reborn in a certain way because this Uranus in Jupiter conjunction is in your first house, which represents you and expansion, new beginnings. And it also makes you quite confident and therefore you attract different energies when you come from a place of confidence and feeling good about yourself which you will and it's a it, it's exciting it's a time of these of of a new beginning it's been a long time coming and now it's here now as well as where the nodes have shifted Rahu is now in your 12th and K2 is in your 6th. So you do need to watch your health. And hopefully, because of all the new exciting beginnings, you become more health conscious. Things have really made you focus in the area of health. Remember, you need to focus on getting rest and sleep. Because, you know, a lot of times when you do have Rahu in the 12th house, it will cause you to not sleep as well. So you've got to focus on how you can get more sleep. So generally, if you work out more, you, you take care of your body more, you're going to rest a lot better. But chances are with K2 being in your sixth house, things around the workplace have changed. And with things changing around your workplace, you better rest assured that you're worried about things, people that you work with, either your coworkers or employees, you're gonna find that they disappear. They're not there to be a lot of help for you. Therefore, this could cause you to not rest or sleep so much at night because with Rahu in the 12th, you were concerned and worried about things. But the work situation, the people you work with, yeah, they're gonna bail, they're not gonna be helpful, or you might find a lot of people are changing uh, jobs, careers, where you're, the workforce that you're with or work for you changes and changes pretty dramatically. K2 in the sixth house, yes, you have to watch your health. You have to be more cognizant of what you're eating, what you're doing, and probably issues around health and healing you can't get enough of. You're constantly digging and searching for new ways of healing and to improve yourself with K2 there. And watch how you eat because your digest digestion and stomach upsets could, can be a problem. Now, if you have pets, elderly pets, it may be a time that within this next um year, year and a half that you're going to find that they decline with their health. So, and also aunts and uncles, you may lose one if there are any of them that you know are not well. Okay, so if you have your moon or your ascendant sits in Taurus, then this is a time of a great spiritual awakening you're going to find you're more intuitive, you're more psychic. You definitely want to t spend more time alone. And with this comes some of your greatest insights and f new flashes of insight that come when you are alone, private, in your private place. Another thing is, I know you'll be traveling a lot more, maybe even visiting foreign countries more, more than usual. But please pay attention to your dreams because that is where you're going to get a lot of psychic impulses and visions and prophecies. So pay attention. Write down your dreams, especially if they're very vivid or emotional. 
because I guarantee there is something that's trying to be revealed through your dreams. Another thing is you might find people from the past come back, but if there are some difficulties with people from the past, this can be a great time of healing. You'll find this is a time of forgiving, letting go, coming together. That heals everyone so much more when you come from a place of forgiveness and letting go of past grievances. This is what this can give you, and this will be a great healing. So Rahu is in your 11th and K2 is in your fifth for the next year and a half. Rahu in the 11th brings powerful, influential people into your life. New friends, new associates, but most of all, in people of influence. This is a time that you're, you're going to want to be more social because you never know who you're going to meet that can help advance your career or your position. Now, if you have older siblings, there could be an issue with one that you got to deal with, or maybe they're just becoming more problematic one way or another. They will be a focus in your life. Now, with K2 being in your fifth house, the fifth house deals with your children. If you have children, you may find that you're not seeing them as much lately. They're more distant or disconnected from you. But K2 in the fifth house will definitely give you a different kind of creativity. Definitely just out of this world where you can envision and imagine things that go way beyond this world. It is a place of creativity and maybe entrepreneurship where you're going to find that you come up with some very vivid ideas on your creative habits within creating a work a workspace or simply a new business. This is a time you that open to your creative ideas. Now, another thing is going back to Rahu in the 11th. The 11th house is the house of great gains. And while Rahu is here in your 11th house, you will find that you will make more money. You will probably make more money because of who you know and how you're connected. But this is a time of gains and large sums of money can come to you within this time period. So if your ascendant or your moon sign sits in Gemini, then this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is in your 11th house. And this means meeting amazing new people. A whole new group of friends and connections are about to come into your life. New friends. And they will awaken you to a whole new world, a whole new life. This is very interesting and very exciting because the 11th house is friends, groups, organizations. But don't forget, this is also the house of great gains as well. So you're going to find that there's going to be a sudden unexpected surge of wealth into your life somewhere, somewhere within the next six months. And you're going to find the people that you connect with are so expansive and so helpful. And you may might even travel with a group that is amazing. So be aware of that. Now, Rahu's go going into your 10th while Ketu's going into your fourth. Rahu in the 10th house expands your work and your career. It's getting bigger. It's getting better. And with the Jupiter Uranus in your 11th, this is a great year for work, career, business, and expansion with your business. It's time to go for the gusto. Now, also with K2 being in your fourth house, you might find because of the expansion, maybe more money's coming in, you can afford to do something to your home or maybe even buy an extra home. That's how good this could be. But I get changes within the household. So if your mother's still alive, there may be a decline with uh, her health or, or maybe she just has issues or problems that need to be, you need to be aware of. And the other thing about the fourth house is it's, 
it deals with real estate, land, and property. So that will all pretty much shift and change. And be aware that your sense of security is a little threatened. So be confident, be secure. It's all right. For the most part, everything looks really expansive and exciting for you. Now, if your ascendant or your moon sign sits in Cancer, then this means the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is in your 10th house. Expect sudden windfalls. And when I say windfalls, it's like lottery wins with your business and your work. So it's like something sudden happens that makes it great and exciting. Another thing is if you're working uh, for other people, it's a time of promotions. Your boss is very pleased and excited about your work. You will have accolades and promotions and hopefully, yeah, I bet you will. You'll have pay raises because of the appreciation of the job and the work that you're doing with your profession. You're going to feel more purposeful and more meaningful about your work. Everyone needs us. I don't care what kind of job you're in. You've got to feel a sense of purpose. And you do. You feel good about this. So work and career take off. Rahu's in your ninth and K2 is in your third. You will be traveling to faraway places. And if that's not possible or the case, then you're taking classes, new classes that develop your perception of the world, your community, and most of all, you're wanting to learn more about different cultures and how other people live. But this is really about learning, education, expanding your knowledge, especially around the area of spirituality and truth. This is where you're going with this. You're you may even become the teacher at this point in time because you're learning such a great deal. Now, with K2 in the third house, you might find that you're going on unexpected trips and journeys. It's like suddenly you're going places and or maybe you got to make a commute, but you're constantly going somewhere, it feels like. So another thing is, if you have brothers or sisters, and especially younger ones, then you're going to find that this is a time that they, they need, might need your help. You might be visiting them. They're having issues or problems. So help them out, be aware, and you'll be connecting more with siblings. If your ascendant or your moon sign sits in Leo, then the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is in your ninth house. This is the house that deals specifically with spirituality and truth. You are changing abruptly the way you believe. This is quite fantastic that you're going to find awareness. You're going to find the way you always believed is pretty much changing and it changes overnight. This is actually an exciting and a good thing. You might find that you're taking a new class or uh, getting new degrees in something, but most of all you're learning and you're learning beautiful, exciting things that will enhance and improve your life. And travel, unexpected trips, you're going places far away places. You'll travel to the places that you've been dreaming of going to for a long time. So with Leo, that means that Rahu is in your eighth and Ketu is in your second. And Rahu in the eighth house can bring you money through other people, maybe an inheritance, maybe a settlement, maybe even some big win that you didn't expect but it's not necessarily earned money is what I'm talking about. Maybe even your spouse comes into a big win or gain financially, and this will be of great benefit. Now with K2 being in your second house, you might have some issues or problems with family, family of origin. So pay attention to that. And the other aspect of this is take care of your voice 
and what you eat. This is, this is affecting your, your mouth and your teeth. Get a dental checkup because K2 there could mean losses around that area. But pay attention to what you eat. Eat better, healthier foods. This would be uh, a great benefit for you at this time. And the other thing is you might feel like you don't want to talk as much. This is not a good thing because I believe the more that we talk about the things that are bothering us, the better off we are. So express yourself more than, than you're being, than you feel like expressing yourself. Explain yourself, communicate. Don't just be quiet and still because then people will begin to think you meant something else by your quiet. Speak and express yourself and be honest and be real and you'll find that things will work out. If your ascendant or your moon sign is in Virgo, then you may come into a sudden gain because the Jupiter Uranus conjunction will be in your eighth house. And this is money through other people. It could be a, like a big win of some sort. Either your partner will have more money for you or a settlement will bring you more money, but there's going, it's going to be kind of surprising how much it is. So get ready for that. The other aspect, it could be an inheritance, so be aware of that. Another thing is looking at Jupiter in the eighth house, your psychic ability comes alive. You are more aware, you know things, you figure things out. Listen to your guided intuition. It is definitely right on. Now, another thing is it is a time for you to look deep within your heart and your soul. If you've been wanting to get therapy of any kind, it could be massively awakening and healing. Now, all at the same time, Rahu will be in your seventh while K2 is in your first house. K2 in the first house, you feel like checking out of the world. You do not want to associate with, with others. You just want to be on your own. You don't feel like you fit in too much, but that's okay. Rahu in the seventh house deals with partnerships, deals with relationships. And if you're looking for a relationship, this could be the time that you attract that special partner. But otherwise, it could cause a little conflict within the relationship that you're in. So be aware of that. This is time for you to work on your relationship. Maybe get the therapy you need so that your relationships may definitely improve. So if your ascendant or your moon sign sits in Libra, then this is going to be where the Jupiter Uranus are in your seventh house. Now, if you're looking for a relationship, you got it. This is the time period all the way through May. You can meet in a flash, unexpectedly, the partner you're supposed to be with. So get excited over that. Now, if you're not, if you are in a relationship, this can mean your partner is very fortunate, lucky, doing very well, and your relationship is working out beautifully. And if you're thinking about forming any kind of business partnership, I say it's a good time to do so. You'll get a lot out of that partnership. It'll work quite well. So this also means that Rahu is going to be in your sixth house and K2 is going to be in your 12th house. So Rahu in the six will make you work harder and stronger. Work ethic is so important to you, but you're going to find your coworkers or your employees that may not be as dependable as usual. They may be unpredictable. So be aware of that, be on guard and have a backup. And K2 being in your 12th house, 
pay attention to your dreams. This is the most psychic placement. You will get information through your dreams and your intuition. This is one of the most intuitive placements. And you might find that you connect to people from your past more. You'll run into them. They'll make They'll bring back good old memories, or maybe even you'll be dreaming of people from the past or people that have passed on will visit you more in your dreams. Pay attention to that. If your ascendant or your moon sign sits in Scorpio, then this Jupiter Uranus conjunctions in your sixth house and the sixth house deals with your work and service. You're working hard. You're making a difference. And you might find that your coworkers or your employees help you out tremendously. And if you're thinking about getting that new pet, now's the time. You will get the best pet. It's time to enrich your life with the love of a new pet. And also, you may find that you want to work out more and you're more involved in diet and nutrition more than ever. You'll see, you'll see this is a time that all of a sudden you get healthier and stronger and you feel like doing it. You have more willpower to get healthier and stronger. Now, Rahu is in your fifth and Ketu's in your 11th. With Rahu in the fifth house, you're going to find that possibly if you have children, they could be more work. They may demand more of your time. It's not necessarily bad. Maybe there's more events to go to and maybe they have some kind of awards, but it's going to keep you very, very busy. And they could get into trouble if you, you just got to be more on them, seeing where they are and what they're doing. K2 in the 11th house, you may lose a friend. Maybe it might even be a friend that's not well, or maybe it's a friend that you just don't get along with anymore. It's time to, to change, change your whole group of friends probably. Or you could find that you start to relate more to people that are more into the spiritual realm or metaphysical sciences. That's what I see. And if you have an older sibling, you may not get along with them as well as you did before. If you have a Sagittarius moon or ascendant, then this means this Jupiter Uranus conjunctions in your fifth house. And this is the house of creative talent. So you're getting these visions of great creativity. Use it. It's the best time to do something, to create something new. And you might even find that you're compelled to do some writing, um, create some books, things of that nature that you haven't thought about doing for a long, long time. If you're wanting to get pregnant, ha increase your, uh, you know, have a child, this could be the time that it could happen and unexpectedly. So be aware if you're not ready for this. <laughs> now, another thing is the fifth house deals with investing in investments. This could be the time you strike it big, pay attention to the stock market. If that's something you've been wanting to do. You're more lucky at investments at this time. Now with Rahu in your fourth house and K2 in your 10th house, Rahu in the fourth could cause you to have a, a move to finally sell or move where you're living and or clear out your property. Something about your home environment will change. If your mother's still alive, you might find that she's unpredictable or she may need some help. Be aware of this. But overall, I think there's going to be expansion in the home, in real estate, and where you're living. But K2 in the 10th, I guarantee you something about your work is going to change. You're either going to change jobs or departments or maybe even who you work for changes, maybe your boss, but something about your work will change pretty extreme. So if your moon or your ascendant sit in Capricorn, then this means that the Uranus and Jupiter conjunction are in your fourth house. This would be a sudden pleasant, unexpected change in the home. Maybe you are moving. Maybe you're expanding, renovating. 
And it can also be a time to buy a car. The fourth house deals with vehicles. But overall, I think that there's good things happening in the home front. And if your mother's still alive, exciting news from her. And one more thing, you're going to be very happy and excited about the changes that happen in the home because the fourth house is actually the house of happiness. So this means for Capricorn that Rahu's in the third and K2 is in the ninth. So with Rahu in the third, this would mean maybe you're connecting more with your brothers and your sisters, going on trips with them or going to go visit them. You will be traveling more. It's going to be a lot in the car. Maybe you're going on unexpected short trips for the weekend and such. And or I can tell you this, there's something about learning you want to learn more. Maybe you're going to start taking some online classes or reading more. And it's also the house of writing. So you're going to be more inspired to do that writing, writing that book, journaling. A lot's going to come out. A lot is there to be learned through the exercise of writing. But if you've been wanting to write a book, now's the time to start. And you might find that you have to commute more because like I said, you're going to spend more time in the car. K2 in your ninth house. This is a time that you do change your philosophies and you become deeply more spiritually grounded and rooted. Beliefs change. And you might find that you can't get enough of spiritual truth and learning. Maybe you, you even seek out a teacher for spirituality. And you might find that there's a trip that you have to go on that really teaches you a lot and there's new discoveries. Now, if your father's still alive, this could be a time when he is declining and not doing as well. Check, check that out. And if he has any aches or pains, please get it checked out by a doctor. This can be a major decline for the father. And there might be disappointment also in the realm of teachers. So look at that as well. So if your moon or your ascendant sits in Aquarius, this means that the Jupiter Uranus conjunctions in your third house. And yes, this is a time for self-expression, communications, writing, all those things are really coming up for you right now. But you're so interested in learning new things, going to school, getting an education, or just taking classes online, but something about expanding your knowledge and connecting to people, maybe something in social media or the internet. Some way or other, you're meant to connect to people more during this time. Get connected. It's a very positive thing. Through these connections, you, you're going to find something very exciting and new is going to evolve out of this. Now, another thing is you will be going on a lot of trips, a lot of short trips, unexpected trips. You're going places and mostly by car. I'll, I'll give it that. Another thing is with the third house, you're going to find that you're thinking, you're constantly thinking and new ideas are coming to you. It is a house of creativity. So you feel a lot more creative and expansive and your willpower is stronger as well as your momentum being courageous about things. So with this, Rahu's in your second house while K2 is in your eighth house. But Rahu being in the second will increase your ability to make more money. Financial gains will come about for you. This is very positive. And the other thing is connections with the family. You'll come together more. May not always be so easy to get along with, with your family during this time, but you will have events coming together with family. And maybe there's some things you need to work out or discuss, especially about financial situations, okay? But K2 being in your eighth house, this is 
really amazing how much your psychic ability is coming out. You're being more psychic, more aware. Things are so different for you. Um, and even understanding a deep understanding psychologically about who you are and your purpose and why you're here. This is so deep and so profound. But one thing I do find is you might be more aware of death and dying. Maybe there's a, a fear that comes about and I'm not telling you you're dying because you're not, but there's a fear about it more than anything. You're worried about it. And maybe this is a time that you can develop your psychic ability where you actually do communicate to the spirit world. And this is a good thing. And you'll find that your connections to spirit are more profound and there's a lot of self-discovery through this. So if your ascendant or your moon sign sits in Pisces, then the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction are happening in your second house. And this is money, wealth, big events could happen. A, a sudden windfall of financial gains could come your way. This is, this is excitement. And another thing is maybe family comes together and somehow empowers you, gives you an exciting opportunity. Another thing is be aware of what you're saying. You will develop a different tone, a different voice, a different way of expressing yourself through your words. And they're very powerful. So your voice becomes more powerful. It's also a time for you to watch what you eat and to, to change and clean up your diet and get healthy. You will during this time. So another thing is your Rahu will be in your first and K2 will be in your seventh. This is very different. And with this, I am seeing you are becoming more self-sufficient, more aware, more aware of who you are, stronger, more independent, but your partner may not like it if you're married because <laughs> K2 is in the seventh house. Maybe they're insecure over your new self-found confidence and awareness, but all at the same time, there might be a problem in your relationship. If your relationship has been treading on thin ice, there could be a crack that you're going to have to go in and heal and work on your relationship much more deeply than you ever have before. But all at the same time, this could even just mean that your partner's not well. Listen to them. If they are complaining about something, get it checked out. As well as if you are not in a relationship, you might find that people from your past could come back during this time. Old loves, old feelings. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not good. If it's not good, then be aware that there's something you can gain in terms of this, in terms of healing, in healing the past so that you are ready for a new relationship. But it actually means if you're not in a relationship, it's time to look at the issues in your previous relationships that caused the breakup so that you can work on them and heal them so you will be ready for a new relationship. This is a very powerful time for healing the issues around relationships, whether you're in one or not. So with that, I think I'll close. I think I have covered all of the 12 signs. Now remember, if you want more specific information and you want that information uncensored, the best I have to give, join my Patreon page. Go to Patreon Joni Patree and the link's right down below. So check it out. You will not regret it. We'll come together as a family, as, as a group to raise consciousness and most of all, one of my big things is to bring astrology to the next level and be aware too that 
I'm about to probably start semester one in the beginning of the year in my University of Vedic Astrology. Check all these things out. And most of all, my 2024 predictions are going to come out in December. You won't want to miss it. Sign up for that. We have so much to look at in the next year. 2024 is going to be a phenomenal year for everyone. So with that, I think I'll close. Thank you.